Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Anil Carmel. Anil is the co-founder and CEO at RecScale, which delivers a continuous compliance automation platform. Anil has over 24 years in the industry from working on developing cloud and collaboration technologies for Los Alamos National Laboratory to being the CTO of National Nuclear Security Administration. Wow. And now, until uh, uh, Anil, thank you for joining us for our Risk Management Show podcast. And uh, please, uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your career path, and what brought you to where you are right now? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, Boris, thank you so much for having me on uh, the show. It's an honor to be here and uh, really excited for this conversation. So, um, you know, so my way of background, um, you know, I did spend uh, almost a decade um, at Los Alamos National Laboratory, as, as you mentioned, building uh, their cloud and collaboration platforms with a great team of folks. Um, and, you know, really the challenge there was all the compliance artifacts that had to be generated uh, in Word docs and Excel spreadsheets, uh, you know, hundreds of pages of documentation to verify and validate that what we had built was compliant with the uh, regulatory uh, requirements uh, that were uh, beholden to that institution. Um, and then, uh, you know, come to Washington, D.C., where I am based now, um, sitting on the other side of the table, um, working uh, with my fellow co-founder and our chief technology officer, Travis Howerton, as the CTOs of the U.S. Nuclear Weapons Program, now having to physically signing off and accept risk on these stacks of paper um, on behalf of the U.S. government going, this is uh, clearly not scalable and thought there has to be a better way. Wow. wow. So I believe that we will have a, a very uh, thoughtful conversation on the topic of uh, a growing uh, reg ops, as you call it, uh, uh, movement and why compliance is overdue for automation and integration. Exactly right. Yeah, excited to have this conversation. Yeah, so well, Anil, can you tell us what is uh, RegOps uh, and how does it differ from uh, traditional compliance operations and approach? Yeah, great question. So, you know, to, to really you know, answer that properly, I think we have to take lessons from an adjacent discipline that has undergone this transformation and is still undergoing this transformation and that's software development and deployment. So there used to be a time where software developers would write code and then they'd hand it over to a system administrator, someone like me, and I go test it, go make sure it goes, runs in the environment, go find whatever issues there are, go hand it back to the software developer who'd go and test and fix the things, then go hand it back to the system administrator, they'd go deploy it in an environment. And there was a lot of time wasted between these two disciplines um, to get something actually deployed into an environment. Then security professionals were brought in and said, no, 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 here's all these issues, you gotta go fix all this stuff. Um, and you know that was that was done after the fact. So this first notion of DevOps uh, development operations was born for developers to work in harmony with operators to consistently push code into environments uh, without all this lag. And that evolved into DevSecOps, where security was brought into the process earlier. So this kind of shift to left movement was born go this way, uh, to try and make security real time and continuous and complete, uh, but all working together in synchronistic harmony. Um, so this was a cultural transformation coupled with tooling to make this happen. So you had to evolve how traditional software development and deployment was done, right? Instead of all of this manual lag between people working individually in their own silos, CICD pipelines were born, um, new technology approaches were born, so security tools were integrated in those approaches. Now developers can push a button, it can go through a set of automated checks, and then it's automatically deployed into an environment where you know the code is doing all the work and checking and then pushing into the environments they have to be uh, pushed into in minutes as opposed to days or weeks. So an agile manifesto was uh, written um, uh, that, uh, you know, really kind of defined this new way of working so that these teams could work together. So I say all that to set the stage for, you know, how do you take the principles of DevOps and bring it to compliance? So what I'd like to posit is this thought or notion of regulatory operations or reg ops, where 
by working side by side and in harmony with both the regulator and the regulated, right, with the appropriate guardrails between the two organizations, um, you have the ability to evolve your compliance artifact development at a much faster pace than traditional manual paper-based approaches that simply cannot scale to meet the needs of the business where IT is evolving at a very quick pace, but compliance artifacts are still being built in these Word docs and Excel spreadsheets, right? And as business matures quickly, as technology matures, we need to mature our GRC programs and understand what our risks are in near real time and understand what our compliance gaps are in near real time. Yeah. So it uh, looks like, uh, for example, for uh, regulation, it's too much, too many inputs. Because if you uh, like think as a bank, you have to think about uh, American uh, regulation, European regulation, Basel II regulation, and every every time uh, new uh, uh, new updates coming in. So it's all con constantly changing world. So is it still uh, up to scale to uh, to do this? Uh, uh, kind of regulation via this uh, new movement? And what are the some factors uh, driving this trend? So uh, is it still AI, uh, ML, or is it something else? I think it's a combination thereof. I mean, you know, so one of the big pressing challenges are the fact that as new technology is being developed and deployed like AI and ML, like new, new approaches in cloud, new software that you know, organizations want to take advantage of, the regulatory burden is also increasing across regions, across geographies, right? That you have to demonstrate compliance against, right? For these new technologies that can help accelerate your business. Problem is the approach that we use to, to demonstrate compliance and to ascertain risk is still largely manual, is still largely paper-based and still largely a human-led effort. And we're not leveraging technology and tools to help us do some of this manual routine work to allow humans to go make informed risk-based decisions and recommendations for the business. So that's where this RegOps movement is really being birthed from is the ability to say, look, you know what? There are new regulations I have to demonstrate compliance with. If I could just map those regulations to what I have, I've gathered evidence for these new technologies. I built the mapping. Here's my evidence. I map it to multiple controls. I map those controls to multiple regulations. And now I can output audit ready documentation on demand and in the format that I want to see it. You want a 600 page Word document? Push a button. Here you go. And it's always right. All right. So I would like to ask you a personal point of view. Please. What is the commonly held belief or a major misconception in the field of uh, compliance uh, that you are kind of strongly or even passionately disagree with? Um, you know, I, I think there's a lot of fear and angst that people are going to be going to lose their jobs because of yeah. automation. Exactly. The reality is that's not true. This has all happened before. Right. So I'm an old system administrator myself. Right. There was a widely held fear among system administrators that we'd all be automated out of a job that did not hold true. What happens is our skills were up leveled to where we could now write scripts to go run our data centers as opposed to going in and physically doing things or physically clicking buttons to go make things work. We allow the technology to do the things that were routine and mundane, and we could focus on more value-added activities so that as massive data centers were built, we helped build as an old system administrator, the, the, the infrastructure that powers today's modern enterprise. So the same thing needs to happen with compliance. People are not gonna lose their jobs because of compliance. They're gonna have the ability to up-level their skill set to be have a seat at the table to say, all right, you know what, instead of the compliance function or the risk function, right, not being a value added activity to the enterprise, just a checkbox activity of, hey, you know what, I just want to quickly check the box and say, all right, I've got my compliance. Now I'm not going to look at that. 
until you know this next time or okay i understand what my risks are i'm just going to go ahead and you know table that and, and look at it you know at the next quarter you can now have a seat at the table and as a human say all right here are my active risks here's all the evidence that i've captured here's all the open incidents and threats and controls that um, are not being addressed or being met that then increases this risk Here's the cost to the business. Here's the ROI for remediating that risk, right? And here's the trend of that risk over time. You can now have a seat at the table and say, look, this is why we need to make these investments. Here's where I can make these investments to reduce these risks to then right, realize ROI very quickly and allow the business to accelerate. So it, 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 I think it's really going to be an upskilling of our workforce by taking advantage of this RegOps movement. That isn't going to automate away jobs, but upskill folks. Mm. Oh. Let's drill a little bit uh, deeper. Uh, for example, if we take a life of um, a CISO or, com or compliance manager, if there is one thing that they should start to uh, prioritize right now that they are not doing, what, what would it be? Automation is here for compliance. If you're not thinking about or looking at how you can employ automation in your GRC program, you are going to end up with a situation where you're going to have costs that you can no longer maintain or manage or control. So as we have macroeconomic trends that are pushing organizations to strongly evaluate where they're making investments, this is an area where if you make an investment, you will realize tangible cost savings that you can re-employ into other areas of the business to meaningfully manage your security posture as your budgets are flat or even decreasing this is an area of investment that will pay off in dividends that historically has been untouched for decades mm -hmm. okay fantastic so well, let's go uh, to discuss about your uh, company uh Eric scale so what are the business cases that your solution solves in the best in the eyes of your customer and Maybe can you give some examples of user cases? Uh, just to, you already kind of indicated, but just to be practical, I know you you worked in a specific in the new uh, Los Alamos uh, uh, National Laboratory, laboratory, and also uh, for uh, a large uh, organ uh, company, uh, uh, government uh, uh, organization. So does it is it applicable also to uh, smaller companies? Absolutely. It is absolutely applicable to both small and large entities. It's really, you know, we built a platform here that's designed to meet the needs of any enterprise, whether you're small or you are a large multinational, right, across any regulatory framework. So, um, you know, we've had customers that, enterprise customers that use RegScale, for example, for NIST compliance, so NIST 853, automating the risk management framework. So, being able to identify and continuously monitor your controls in near real time um, is something that RegScale does right out of the box. So what we do is we integrate with your existing security tools for that use case. Take the findings from those tools as mapped to your compliance frameworks. You can say NIST, but it could be ISO, it could be PCI, it could be GDPR, right? Automate the creation of tickets in your ticketing system so you don't have to wait for an audit to go find where you're no longer demonstrating that your controls are in a place or effective for someone to go work on them. Push a button, audit ready documentation on demand. So you can show, okay, here's my evidence, an entire evidentiary package showing I am meeting my GDPR requirements or I am meeting my NIST requirements right right out of the box in the format that the stakeholders or regulators want to see. So you want it in Word, out it comes in Word. You want that Excel spreadsheet, out it comes in Excel spreadsheet. We can even output it in a machine readable format. So we have industry leading support for NIST open security controls assessment language, which is a machine readable language to output the format in, in XML or JSON. We out output in JSON. So, you know, we give you these multiple ways to output information, and we have the ability to digitize the documents and, and regulations that you have. So if there's a regulation that you're beholden to in, an, in, in a particular industry that we currently have digitized, we have the ability to digitize that regulation and the associated 
compliance documentation that you maintain against that regulation that's stored in Word Docs or Excel spreadsheets in days as opposed to manually having to enter that. And then the last part of that is we wrote a compliance manifesto that mirrors the Agile manifesto. So if you go to regscale.com slash regops, you'll see a definition of what we, we believe regops to be in, in this manifesto. One of the principles of that manifesto is we believe compliance shouldn't be unaffordable. In fact, it should be free to get started. Um, so we have a completely free community edition with hundreds of thousands of downloads worldwide over the past year. Fantastic. So where do you see that all this uh, movement, uh, RegOps uh, as a whole is heading and what are the trends in the space uh, and what should we expect uh, from you guys in the future? Well, we, we believe that this is the new way that uh, GRC programs should be managed. If you Traditional GRC programs that don't embrace um, automation are, are destined to be replaced with uh, both technology and a new method and uh, methodology of, of thinking about this problem. So as automation works its way into traditional GRC, this is a fantastic way to add value to an enterprise deal with the growing regulatory burdens that are beholden upon us, be able to earn a seat at the table to say, look, this is how governance, risk, and compliance is adding value to the enterprise to integrate and ascertain risk for an organization in near real time, right? And leverage automation to do the routine mundane tasks that computers do well allow humans to do what humans do well in a great human and machine experience, leveraging a cultural transformation, which is what we're talking about here with RegOps, coupled with technology and tooling to change an entire industry that ostensibly hasn't seen innovation in decades. And that's what we're trying to do here is lead an entire movement to reimagine an industry and how we do our work. This has happened before. It's happened in DevOps. It's time for it to happen in our in the, in our world. All right. So, if we summarize our interview for for someone who is listening to this uh, uh, interview, would like to walk away with one or two major takeaways, what would that be? I'd say automation is here and it's real and tangible for GRC. You can employ automation in a real tangible way. And if if you want to know more, give us a call. We're happy to to to, to give you some uh, thoughts around how to, how to make that real in your own organization. Um, and, you know, the second thing I'd say is, you know, movements happen because people say, I want to be part of the change. So, you know, the, don't wait for someone else to come in and say, this is how uh, I'll do it. Be part of the movement. Join this RegOps movement today. Talk about it and share it with your friends and colleagues because it takes a community to change an industry. So I'd implore this entire community to join the RegOps movement, talk about it online, hashtag RegOps, and let's completely change how risk is managed and how compliance is managed. Move it from a point in time activity to a near real time continuous activity. Mm -hmm. So as a community manager to a, another community manager, how, what are your tips? Uh, how can we, we in the global risk community can contribute to better understanding of this complex world, world of risk and compliance? The only way we can, we can change the way people do this is to talk about it. Hashtag RegOps as, a, as we build our communities and as we share this new approach with folks. Let's talk about how we can collectively change the world, right? It, you know, it's not so much about tooling. There's all kinds of tooling out there. Obviously, we have a platform, but there are other platforms that are out there. But, you know, the only way we're going to effectively enact change in our industry is talk about it to our senior leaders, be the boots on the ground that can be physical members of the reg, reg ops movement to, to transform and, and disrupt, again, an industry that hasn't seen innovation in decades. So, you know, talk about it online, LinkedIn, Twitter, social, right? Hashtag RegOps. The, the time is now, right? Because the world is changing faster than compliance and risk can evolve with it. Let's make all them all right. real time. Fantastic, Anil. I wish you and your company a great success and uh, continue driving this movement. 
And uh, this all uh, those all, uh, all my questions. Uh, perhaps if I forgot something and you would like to add uh, anything, uh, you are welcome uh, to to do. Yeah, I'd say you know if you're interested in learning more about either RegScale or RegOps, feel free to reach out directly. Go to RegScale.com. Um, we have folks standing by that can help you. Uh, we have a completely free community edition. You can download a copy and try it yourself. Um, you know, and uh, and really get started on this journey because. Um, you know, every journey begins with a single step and, you know, we are the boots on the ground that are leading a movement to reimagine this industry. So um, reach out directly, go go to regscale.com. There's a multiple ways in which to engage with uh, with our teams, but uh, we'd love to have a conversation with you as to how you can be an active part of the RegOps movement. All right. Fantastic. And you know, maybe we can uh, discuss in a few months uh, another episode about your another part of your journey. Absolutely. Happy to do that. And thanks again for having me, Boris. Thank you. Bye-bye.